the concept of making a pair of dungarees with this pattern has now been rattling around living rent free in my brain for the last however many weeks it was since I made the conductor overalls. Hello and welcome back. So I have been utterly and completely coveting, and when I say coveting, I mean coveting, a pair of vintage jeans, specifically a pair of jeans with a hidden pocket zipper. I keep coming across them in my For You page, both on Instagram and in Etsy, and basically anything that puts information in my face gives me these jeans. And I always loved the notion of a really great pair of vintage jeans. However, one, I'm definitely not in the tax bracket to be able to afford a pair of vintage jeans. Like we're talking three, four, five hundred dollars. Okay. I'm kind of sort of not in the price point to afford a pair of Freddie of Pinewood. And even if I really scrape together Christmas money or whatever, I might be able to scrounge a pair of Hell Bunny, but I definitely hate buying jeans without trying them on. And it's one of those things where I'm difficult to fit when it comes to jeans, especially in the rise. So ever since I made these, I'll put it up here somewhere, overalls using Simplicity 8447, I have found that they are genuinely comfortable as trousers. And so I think I want to use them to make a pair of dungarees. And it's the concept of making a pair of dungarees with this pattern has now been rattling around living rent free in my brain for the last however many weeks it was since I made the conductor overalls. And the only thing stopping me is the fact that I hadn't quite figured out exactly how I want to make the hidden side zipper. I love the way that the pants themselves fit, but hacking the pattern so that way the zipper happens correctly has been the one thing that has stopped me. But I genuinely spent the last couple of days desperately making little mini mock-ups until I figured it out, and I have, and I'm so excited. So let me show you exactly what I did to come up with my pocket hack for these jeans. So I spent way more time than I would like to admit staring at this photo from the 1954 Sears catalog, trying to figure this out. And I think I have it. I did come up with an alternative that is very similar to these Rebel jeans from 1952, I believe the ad was listed as. And I've got that all worked out as a little mini mock-up with the zipper right here. But I totally wasn't in love with the zipper being that bulky. Like that's a lot more bulky than I would have liked. And yes, I know by doing it in flannel, it's going to be bulky, but so is denim. And so I kept working on it and came up with this mock-up where it's in here. So that looks a whole lot more like <laughs> this picture. Let me show you exactly how I did this. So I first started out with my pattern piece exactly as it is. Don't use your original pattern pieces. Do your best if you can to trace them so that way your originals are always undamaged. So starting with a second copy of my original, I traced the pocket where I wanted it to go. By looking at all of the pictures, it showed that the base of the pocket is really, really close to the crotch seam. So that's how big I made my pocket. Once I had this figured out, I cut it out, which left me with a pocket pattern. Now, how do I get my zipper into my pocket pattern? Well, by looking at all the different pictures I could find, I figured out that the pocket bag is diagonally slashed like this. So I drew, then drew a straight line diagonally across the pocket bag, which I then folded in half 
and traced again. But this time, when I traced it, I added my seam allowances. So my zipper teeth is then going to go along this purple line, which here is this orange line. Optionally, you can also cut out a piece of 3 by 14 of your denim to make a lap that goes under your zipper. And so your pocket bag will go like this, the lap will go like this, and your zipper will be sandwiched in between the two. So for my pocket swoop, I went back to my original pattern piece and I figured out by laying it out where I wanted my pocket swoop to be on me. And then I came in by my seam allowances. And so this orange line is now my cut line. So these are ultimately what you'll end up with. For my fabric, I ended up buying two and a half yards of this absolutely luscious dark denim. It's 11 ounces, slightly stretchy, and it's by the brand Lucky. So if you like Lucky jeans, then you know where to go. Joann's now carries it. Uh, it was on sale for $15 a yard, which is still a little out of my budget, but I had a 20% off my total purchase coupon and I had $10 in rewards points where if you're in Joanne's Smile program, those accumulate really, really quickly. And so ultimately I got my two and a half yards for about 20 bucks. I will say this, if you get your fabric at Joanne's, be cognizant because I did not notice when I was having this fabric cut, but it's got a hole in it. Actually, there's two. If I'd noticed it while it was still on the cutting table, I would have had her like start cutting after that hole, but I didn't notice it till I got home. And because Joanne's is a 40 minute drive for me, I was not going back. I'm just gonna fussy, do my best to fussy cut around it and hopefully it'll be okay. The fabric that I decided to use for my lining and the bottom pocket bag is this quilter's cotton. It's a very, very dark navy blue. It's almost identical to the denim color, but it's got these really cool autumn food themes. This was a half a yard scrap that I had left over from another project, pre-washed, pre-shrunk. I did not spend money on this. It was left over from another project. And I love the idea of using something contrasting or fun to be on the inside. I I love that. There's a couple of images that I have found from Vintage Lee's and Vintage Levi's that they used um, plaid on the inside, which is also very cute. And so I feel like it's playing off of that um, printed lining. Okay, I now have everything completely cut out. I've got the pants front, the pocket bag top, which is cut out of denim, the pocket bag bottom, which is cut out of a quilter's cotton, my zipper lap. I did decide to make a little coin pocket for the opposite pocket. And this one is, I made it three inches by three inches so that it'll fit right there. I've got my waistband and waistband lining, which is made out of the same quilter's cotton. I've got my butt pocket and my pants back. In hunting around the internet, I have also seen a lot of people being super cheeky using a contrasting thread as the serger thread. And so since my quilter's cotton has a lot of orange in it, I decided to do my serger thread in orange orange and I think that that's going to be really cute especially when you cuff the bottom of the jeans and you'll see that little pop of orange okay let's talk about how to put these pockets together give me a second let me flip you guys around so you can see what I'm looking at on all of my pocket pieces I drew my seam allowances on using a friction pen that that will come off with heat. But I drew my seam allowances in on both the left pockets and the right pockets. So that way I know exactly where to line these up because lining up inverted points can always be difficult. On the left pocket, on this line is where I'm lining up the teeth of my zipper. So I've got my zipper now pinned to my top pocket bag 
and I've got it pinned right along my seam allowance like that. So then when I sew through here, this will end up like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom pocket bag. So here is my pocket bag with the zipper inserted. I haven't added the lap yet, but that's super easy. All I need to do is line it up centered here. And I'm just going to line it up matching my orange threads so that they lay together all nice, like so. And then just top stitch right here. And then the only other thing I have to do before attaching them is I need to just top stitch my little coin pocket right here. I want to make sure that once I hem this pocket, it's going to still cover that corner. So that's what I like for my pocket placement. So this is how the pants front and pocket will look once everything is sewn into place. I am going to use this, however, to trace where my pocket top stitching should go. And so to do that, I'm going to line it up on the outside, toss a couple of weights on it, and then with a washable tailor's pencil, I'm going to trace this, which will leave a little bit of a white line. And then I'm going to use this white line along the edge of my presser foot in order to do my top stitching and that will attach the pocket bag in place. I'm also going to use this pocket bag on both the left and the right to trace so that way they look identical just in case there are any minor differences between the two pocket bags. So now you can actually see my stitch lines are the foot width in from my chalk line. Okay, both my pants front and my pants back have my pockets attached. This pocket is my hidden zipper. And so up until the point where I have to add the waistband on, these basically will just get assembled like a regular pair of pants. I am going to continue using my traditional honey colored denim thread to top stitch everything and to flat felt my seams so that they look like authentic dungarees. It's coming along. Okay, I have got these mostly assembled. So all I have to actually do now is add the waistband. I'm super excited for how they're coming out. And so let me flip you around so you guys can see how I am going to do that. So here's how they look. There is my hidden zipper. How I'm going to add the waistband is open up my zipper and now my waistband goes from here to here. So I'm encompassing the zipper lap on this side and on this side it's just the pocket and then I'm making sure to catch the pocket lining. So I shifted everything down and I'm not really paying attention to my notches. Plus I gave myself an extra few inches just in case I needed it, but it doesn't look like I do. And then making sure we catch all the layers. And then I'm not going to cut this excess off until I know exactly how much I need. So basically what I now am going to do is just sew this. This gets flipped up. And then my lining will get sewed to this right sides together like this and it'll live like that okay these are done and ready for a button so I'm just gonna put a standard buttonhole right here and I do have some jeans buttons for right there and they're done and I 
I am really happy with how this came out. Uh. Okay, guys, these dungarees turned out to be a one-day build. They are done, and I will see you guys in the review. I absolutely love how my vintage-inspired dungarees turned out. I couldn't be more happy with how the hidden zipper in the side pocket works. It took me forever to wrap my brain around how to make this work, and now that I have, I am so stoked about it. If I were to do anything differently about making these jeans moving forward, I definitely need to add the belt loops because that just makes it more jeans-like. And I might pay a little bit more attention to my rear pockets, but that was more of an afterthought because I actually had to take them in after the pockets were on. So that's my bad. Alrighty guys, I hope you had a fantastic time uh, discovering how to make a hidden pocket with me. And I I will see you guys next week for more shenanigans.